All right, so I'm cleaning up these images, selectively erasing. I like the thin lines of this kind of cigarette and lighter illustration. Is there anything I don't want? Anything I want deleted from it? It's interesting because lines that are really close together, even though they're solid black, will start to look gray when seen from a distance. That's called hatching. And I think the only thing I don't want is maybe the handle of the knife right there. So I'm just going to use my lasso and just swoop within those lines. Go to the knife layer. Oops. Not the knife layer, the uh, cigarette layer, and then just erase that there. But that is all connected, so I need to be a little bit more precise. Like this. So right now I'm actually cutting my own line. It means I need to be a little bit steadier with my hand. And that's why we have tablets, which we'll be getting into later when we do our first assignment. But you can do kind of targeted cuts there. And maybe I want to get rid of the line as it overlaps here as well in the cigarettes. Really, maybe just all of this. I don't need so much. But I'll keep that lip because it's kind of like smoke coming off of the cigarette. So in this way, even though we're compositing with other pixels, other people's pixels, it's kind of like spontaneous drawing. You're just finding little tweaks and changes to make that you think are helpful by just cutting pixels away. I don't want you to try to be too perfectionist about just this exercise, but you can see all the power you have, all the ability you have to kind of control each pixel. That's what a raster program is all about. Okay, so I think that's looking a little bit better. Then I have my other references, but honestly, they're getting a little much now. That's why five is a good number. So I think I'm going to leave it at this. I have one, two, three, four, five layered up. So now, to finish it off, I don't need to delete these layers I'm not using. I can just leave them turned off and save them in the Photoshop file. Now, what if I wanted to reposition everything, just kind of center it a little bit better? If you hold down Shift, not only can you add to a selection, you can add selecting multiple layers. So if I hold down Shift, I can highlight all five of my layers. And then if I use the Move tool, I can move it. If I use the Command T, the free transform tool, I can rotate it all, even though they're separate layers. I can even, in these newer versions of Photoshop, I can even warp it all, which is pretty amazing, or at least distort it all, even though they're on separate layers. So I encourage you to kind of tweak it and play with it that way. I can play with the perspective of it just to make it more and more my own image. And then I can always hit Command Z after the free transform to see if I like that change, and then Shift Command Z to toggle back and forth. I'll let you guys decide. Do you like that better, or do you like that better? Like this? Yeah, it's a little bit stronger in diagonals, a little bit more dynamics. Yeah, this design is definitely all about like strong diagonals, right?
crisscrossing. Okay, so if that's it, this is the next step I'm going to do. I am going to create a layer that has all five of those layers merged together. To do that, this is something I've never actually seen on a Photoshop tutorial site or on a, in a Photoshop book, but it is something that I learned by doing, and it's the most wonderful thing, and I've shared it with everyone I can. So I don't know how well known it was, but if you hold down Option, and then go to Layer, and then hit Merge Layers. First of all, let me show you what happens if you don't hold down Option. I have all these layers selected, they're turned on. I can turn off the background, because I don't want that white to show, but you can see the white that's in some of those layers, right? If I go to, to Layer and I say Merge Layers or Merge Visible, it's gonna collapse those layers into one which is what I said I wanted, but it comes with a lot of cost, right? It means I don't have any of those working individual layers anymore to make changes to. So for a working file, that's not a great thing. So instead, I'm going to Command Z. Before I merged it, I can go in my history, right? And now I'm going to do that same thing, but I'm going to hold down Option while I do it. So if I say layer merge visible while holding down the option key, the alt option key, it will collapse them all into one layer while preserving the layers that they came from. So I'm just going to turn all those layers off. Move this one up to the top and to show that it's a merged layer, that this is now what I'm working on, I can give it a color. So if you right click on where the eyeball is, you can say okay green, that's the one that matters. Now when it's like this, you'll see that it's in normal mode. It's no longer in multiply mode. And that's because now I can use my magic wand. I can uncheck contiguous. I'll keep it at the default tolerance, which is just how sensitive it is to different pixels. I'll just keep it at 32. But black and white is pretty good. It's not going to matter much. And then I'm just going to click on the white. If I click on the white anywhere, it will select the white everywhere within that layer. And then hit delete. Then I can hit command D to deselect. And I've got my image. And now it's on normal mode. So now it really is just black pixels, free floating. And that's what our goal was. And if I save this as a JPEG, whether I have my white background turned on or not, a JPEG cannot have empty pixels. A JPEG does not support what's called transparency. So the JPEG would automatically fill in that empty space with white pixels. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save it. First, save as a PSD file, and then save as a copy. And when you save a copy, that's when you get the option to do online formats like JPEG. It does this to try to protect you so you don't easily overwrite your PSD with a JPEG and then erase your PSD. So, so it will add the word copy to it and then usually I'll give it a different color. I'll make my, uh, my online file formats green or sorry my working file formats green my, my online file formats orange. And I tend to do that not in this screen because it's a little annoying. And you want to save it as a JPEG. Notice when you do that, it changes the digital format tag to the title. Never type in the digital format tag at the end. Never type in period PSD or period JPG. The computer does that for you. Because if you type it in and you type it wrong, the computer will not know how to open the file. right? And you just have to guess what file is this and you'll have to keep doing different things. Online file formats like PNG and JPEG don't actually need the tag in their name. And that's another confusing thing. So then you're going to get this screen for a JPEG. Because JPEG is a loss compression, it's like rounding numbers, you can decide how much do you want it to lose. The more you let it round, the less memory it takes. We don't want to save a lot of memory in this class because we don't want to lose quality in our images. So we're just going to always do like from quality 10 to 12 because these aren't huge, especially when they're just black and white. 
So now I want you to see what you saved. This is the first thing you're going to post to Canvas. That's a finished product. And mine is in downloads somewhere. Should be. Oh, no, it's going to be in that exercise one folder in downloads. So I need to do a better job and put this on my desktop, but I'm just not there yet. So here I have the JPEG. It's the online format. And here I have the PSD. It's the working format. Right. And this will go onto Canvas. So I'm going to click on Edit and post that. Then we use the little embed image. And I put the JPEG in there. If I put the PSD in there, it won't work. It's too large. Canvas can't read it. So just in the last 30 minutes, I've made a pretty big change to the work from where I started just by cleaning up and erasing and being more selective. OK, next, we have the, the optional features, which you'll see in the directions at the end. And that's to go back to an image search. I can just do a Google image search this time. And under Google Images, I'm just going to search for something that's like a texture or color that I associate with this content. And uh, I'll just look up greasy. So if I look up images of greasy hair, I want it to be really big. So how do I do that? I go to tools. This is good review. I go to size. I go to large. I can go to color. And I want any color here. See if this is big enough. Open those links in a new tab. I could go to Pixabay too, which would give me probably even larger files. Oh, that's pretty darn big though. And that is mighty greasy. So let's open that image in a new tab. And unfortunately, well, we'll see. This image might be hard to get to. Yeah, it looks okay. So I'm going to drag that into my folder. Ah, this is a, that's why it's a web photo. So this is a protected file format. It's pretty new, only within the last five years, which the only way it can be viewed is through a web browser. So you could steal the full resolution size, but only if you had a, a super high def large screen and then did a screenshot of it. Otherwise, you can't. You can only view it through a browser. So unfortunately, that's another way where Google Images kind of fails us. Even though it's large enough, it's like 5,000 pixels, I can only view it through a browser. My screen has a limited number of pixels to show it. So even if I do a screen grab of that, that's as big as I can get it. It's a clever way to protect uh, high resolution file sizes. So let, instead, let's go to Pixabay. Let's just look up grease or oil spill. Remember, everything here is going to be large. And you'll get some surprising results like this. <laughs> And for expediency's sake, I'm going to say that's exactly what I was looking for. Free download. I want the largest pixel resolution possible. Goes to my downloads folder. I'll move that into my exercise one folder. And now I go back to my Photoshop file. My PSD, the green one. And I'm going to drag and drop that image on. I'm going to treat this like it's wrapping paper that I'm going to be cutting out of. So I'm going to hold down shift while I drag it to stretch it to make it fill my whole space. I can rotate it. I can flip it. I can do all those kind of things as long as I make sure that it is covering up 
my entire image. 